السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear viewers and students, welcome back to our learning symposium on air for the subject commercial correspondence. In today's lesson, we're going to learn about the secondary parts of business ladder. Upon finishing this lesson, you should be clear with the following. Number one, reference number. Number two, attention line. Three, the subject line. Four, reference initials. Five, enclosure notation. Six, carbon copy notation. Seven, post scripts. And finally, eight second pages. Before we start, dear students, let's have a look at the secondary parts together with the main parts in a typical business letter as in the following. Now, you notice that all the parts of the business letter, including the main parts and also the secondary parts, are in the same layout. However, those in the yellow color represent the secondary part of the business letter. Let's just have a look at the order of these parts together with the main parts. You notice that we have the heading, date inside address, salutation, the body, the complementary clause, and the signature. These are the main parts we discussed before, are in the same order. In today's class, we're going to take the yellow ones which are representing the secondary parts. Follows reference number, the attention line, the subject line, reference initials, enclosure notation, the carbon copy notation, and the post script. The point is, this is an example of a business letter that might encapsulate all the items in one letter. But practically, this may not happen. Because actually we call them the secondary parts. This does not necessarily mean they're not important. The point is, we might sometimes need to use part of them, but not all of them, of course. For example, you might need to use the reference number and the attention line only. In some other cases, you might need to use only the subject line. Some other examples or cases, a lot of companies use CC, that is the carbon copy notation, or very commonly, the enclosure notation. You may also notice that you personally sometimes use the carbon copy notation and the enclosure notation in email correspondence. At the end, the use of the secondary elements in this letter is subject to the need of the company itself. And that is not important to put all these items together in a business letter, so we call it complete. Okay, so the secondary parts and the main parts are always used when needed. Now, dear students, we start our lesson with the first point, that is the reference numbers. Reference numbers consist of numbers and letters to link replies with previous correspondence. Reference numbers also ensure that they reach the right person or department without delay. It's important to know that failing to code your correspondence reference number correctly may cause inconvenience and also regarded as discourtesy. Many letterheads provide spaces for references as in the following example. Your reference, our reference. You can also write the reference number in the upper left hand corner or letter below heading and in the line with the date as follows. You notice in the following example that the reference number is in line with the date within the same line. So the reference number 45 slash AC, and then comes the date in the, same, in the same line. There are different ways of writing reference numbers, 
depending on the filing system used by the firm. But when reference number is used, it should be coded in the reply too. Let us see the reference numbers. Look in the sender's letter. In the following example, we find that our reference, that is the reference number of the sender, which is in line with the date within the same line. And then comes the other details, which is the letterhead and the inside address. This is how the reference number looks in the letter of the sender. Now, let's see how they look in the receiver's letter. Now, this is how the reference number looks in the receiver's letter. You notice that there are two information. The first one, uref b slash 159, in line with the date. And this is the reference of the letter of the sender. Now, the one who receives the letter will also write that reference number, but of course, depending on his company. Our reference, ah slash 88. So, the use of your ref and our ref represent the letters of the company and the letter also of the sender. They also represent both reference initials. Another thing is that the use of the letters B and AH. Now actually, companies might use different letters and also different figures. This might represent the number of correspondents or departments or the nature of business. This is something up to the company itself. We do not have fixed rules to writing letters and digits and reference initials. Notice in the reply letter that the sender's reference number is stated in the first line, whereas the receiver's reference number comes in the next line. You may also notice that some receivers prefer to indicate the reference number of the sender in the body of the letter. Look at the following example. In this example, you find that the letter starts with, the, with reference to your letter number B slash 159 dated 7th of May 2010. You notice that the reference number is stated in the body of the letter and also stated in the reference number as usual letters. You notice that some companies might like to add the reference number in both places, that is, under the inside address and in the body of the letter. The point here is that this body or the content in the body of the letter is of great importance that they want to attract the readers by adding the reference number twice in the heading just below the inside address and also in the body of the letter. Now, dear students, we come to discuss the second point, attention line. Attention line is used when you want to address the letter to a particular number in the company. When using attention lines, we use the phrase for the attention of. The heading for the attention of is typed two line spaces below the inside address and two line spaces above the salutation as in the following example. You notice that here for the attention of Mr. John Better. Then two spaces, we use their sir, which is the salutation. And before the attention line, we find two spaces and then the inside address. Now, as we explain the attention line, we come to discuss the third point of the lesson, subject line. Some companies use a small phrase at the beginning of the body to indicate the subject matter of the letter. This is called a subject line. The subject line also helps the reader to see from the first glance what the letter is all about. There are two cases in which subject heading should always be used. First, when your correspondence himself has used one your reply should then carry the same heading. Two, 
when correspondence is on a significant subject. The subject is usually typed in line with the salutation and double space above the first line of the body of the letter. Look at the following example. In this example, you notice that the salutation, dear sir, in line with the subject, which is payment of bill number 132. Now, dear students, we come to discuss the fourth part of the lesson, reference initials. The initials are the first letters of a person's name or names used as a shortened signature or for identification. The initials of the writer and typist are usually placed flush with the left margin, slightly below the signature. The writer's initials precede the column. The typist follow it in any of the following ways. Examples. Number one, NFP colons HS, or NFB follows HS not capitalized, or number three, NFB follows HS. You notice these stands for letters, like for example, names of persons. This can be Hussam Ahmed, so HA, or AO, Ahmed Usama. Although this is one of the secondary parts of the letter, the use of these initials is not necessary. This is because almost all letter writers type their names as part of the signature. Also, there is no need to the reference initials when the writer types the letter by himself. Let's now learn about the fifth point of the secondary parts, enclosure notation. Sometimes it could be a need to attach a check, price, list, invoices, catalogs, or any other items together with your letter. Senders should mention this either in the body of the letter or in an enclosure notation in the left-hand corner of the letter below reference initials. The letter is the most used. This is important because sending a letter without its enclosure is inefficient, and receiving such a letter is annoying. Enclosures are indicated by writing the word enclosures or the abbreviations ENCL or ENC below the initials. If there is more than one enclosure, add the number of items enclosed as in the following example. Enclosures, four, or you can abbreviate it as ENC4. If the documents or items attached with the letters are important, it's preferred to specify them in the enclosure notations as in this example. Enclosure, insurance certificate. Of course, you can write the word enclosure as enclosure or abbreviated as ENCL. Some companies might also use the word attachment or ATTC, and this is up to the company itself, as long as it serves the same purpose, which is attaching extra documents. Now, dear students, we move to the six points of the lesson carbon copy notation. Carbon copies are useful when a person other than the addressee is to be informed of the content of the letter. It is also useful for the records of the company that sends the letter. This notation is usually typed in abbreviation as CC at the left margin of the letter. It is placed a single or double spaces below either the initials or the enclosures as they are also used. The names of the people to receive carbon copies are listed below the designation. The purpose of this part is to draw the attention of the receiver 
that other parties concerned with the message are kept informed by sending them a copy of the letter. Let us have a look at the following examples. CC, Mr. Omar, sales manager. Dear students, that was about the carbon copy notation. Let us now discuss the seventh point in our lesson, postscript. This represents the remarks written letter on the letter page after the letter has been completely typed and ready to be posted. In fact, these afterthoughts preceded by the abbreviation PS are very rarely used in business letters nowadays. The postscript may take in the form of nota bene, abbreviated as NP, which serves the same purpose. Look at the following example. P.S. Please send us as you receive our letter. Now, dear students, we come to discuss our last point in the second part of the letter, second pages. When the letter is too long to fit in one page, you can continue the message on a second sheet of plain paper of the same quality as for a sheet. Leave one inch from the top of each page and type the name of the addressee, the page number, and the date as follows. Now the following example shows us how this happens. Mr. Taha, and then the second page Two, after that, the date, 2nd of March, 2009. However, it's important to mention that as the letter runs only a little more than one page, there should be at least three lines of the body of the letter on the second page. By this, dear students, we come to the end of the lesson. We discussed the secondary parts of the business letter. The first one was the reference number, second attention line, third subject line, fourth reference initials, fifth enclosure notation, sixth carbon carbon notation, seventh postscript, and finally we discuss the second pages. Our next lesson will be about the styles of typing and punctuations used in the business letter. Until then, I wish you all the best. Thank you for watching us. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته